Hello everyone. Today I'm going to teach you how to decompose time series into seasonal and trend components. This example will be used to explain the decomposition process. This time series will be decomposed into two components. The first component is a trend component and the second component is a periodic component or a seasonal component. And finally this function over here or this time series represents the residual of the decomposition process. So the residual is obtained by subtracting trend and seasonal components from the original time series. And as the result we are going to obtain the residual component. Before I explain the Python code I have to mention that I have created a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. A link to this post is given in description below this video. Okay, so here is the Python code that I used to generate these graphs and in the sequel I will explain this code. So the first step is to clear your workspace. You can do that by typing reset and clicking on yes or typing yes and it's always a good practice to clear your workspace. Perfect. Now you can check your workspace. The namespace is empty. The next step is to import the necessary libraries. First you're going to import the matplotlib. This library is used for plotting graphs in Python. The next step is to import the numpy library for performing matrix, cal matrix calculations and for defining arrays and vectors. And finally, we're going to use the stats models Python library to perform the decomposition. And we will need this function seasonal decompose. The next step is of course to import these libraries. We can import these libraries by selecting them and by clicking on run cell. The next step is to define the parameters of time series and of functions that will be used in this video. We are going to assume total duration of 100 seconds with a step size of 0.01. And using these parameters we are going to define a time vector that will start from 0 and that total duration that's equal to 100 second with the step size of 0 0.01 and if we execute this line of code we will obtain our time vector. The next step is to define the actual time series. So we are going to assume that the time series consists of the periodic component which will be a simple sinusoidal function and of trend component that will be represented by the second order polynomial that you can see over here. In this representation k0, k1, k2 and k3 are constants and t is time and omega is equal to 2 pi over t where t is a period of a sinusoidal function. Accordingly, we first define the period and we choose a period of 15 seconds. Then we define a seasonal component or a periodic component that's equal to the sinusoidal function. This is omega and this is a time vector. Next we define the constants k0 is equal to 2, k1 is 2, k2 is 0 0.05, etc. And notice here that we update the series periodic by multiplying the previous value of the series periodic with k0. 
Here is our trend component, the second order polynomial, and finally we can add these two components to obtain our function or our time series. The function seasonal compose performs the actual decomposition. Its first argument is the time series. In our case, the name of the series is, is just series. The second argument is a type of the, of the decomposition that we want to perform. We want to perform additive decomposition, meaning that the trend and seasonal components are added Another option is to use the multiplicative decomposition where we decompose the original time series into a product of trend and seasonal components. However, we are not going to use this option in this video. And the third and maybe the most important parameter is the period of the time series. Special attention needs to be dedicated to the proper choice of the period parameter. Loosely speaking, the period parameter should be equal to the number of discrete time samples within one period of the seasonal component. Now, usually we do not know a priori the value of the period. We can only guess it. However, in this case, since I have artificially constructed our time series, we know that in time domain, the period of the sinusoidal function will be equal to 15 seconds. Consequently, if we divide 15 seconds by the step, and the step is 0 0.01, here is the step, we can obtain a number of discrete time samples that are within one period of 15 seconds. So if we execute this line of code, we will obtain a period of 1500 seconds or actually I should correct myself 1500 samples now in other applications you do not know the value of this parameter one option of course of course is to heuristically find its value by trial and error another option is to perform a Fourier decomposition of this time series or to compute the power spectral density and then you can see the dominant frequencies and these dominant frequencies in the signal can be a good candidate for this parameter. We decompose the time series by executing this line of code. The function seasonal decompose ret returns the variable called results. This variable or better to say this structure contains the trend, seasonal, and the residual component components, and we can extract these components by executing these three lines of code. And here's our trend, our seasonal component, and our residual component. Don't be confused or fooled by these variables NAN, or these values NAN, they're only at the beginning and at the end of vectors. And finally, we can plot the results. This is the graph from the beginning of this video. The first figure is the original time series, the trend component plus the seasonal sinusoidal components, and these are the estimates. This is the estimate of the trend component, this is the estimate of the seasonal component, and this is our residual. The residual is obtained once we subtract trend and seasonal components from the original time series. We can observe that the magnitude or the amplitude of the residual is very small, which means that we have properly chosen the variable period and the decomposition works very well. Let's see now what happens if we do not choose the period parameter properly. Let's say that we choose period equal to, let's say, 2. Let's see what happens.
Okay, so what happened? We are not able to estimate the trend component correctly. You can see that the seasonal component is almost zero and the residual is quite large. So let's choose, for example, five and see what happens. Again, similar situation. What happens if you choose the period of, let's say, 100? Here the situation is a little, little bit better. We are able to get some seasonal components. However, the trend is still not correctly being estimated and the decomposition shows that the residuals are quite large. So, these three examples of selecting the period randomly show that basically the crucial element in properly decomposing the time series is to properly choose the period. But that's the story for itself. I need to make another video on how to choose the period, actually how to estimate it from the data, how to estimate it once the unknown function with unknown period is given. Okay, so let's fix this problem by selecting the period as t over step and the results will be good again. Now, as the final check, we're going to subtract from the series trend, that is from our original series trend that's equal to the second order polynomial, our estimate of the trend. And let's see the error. Here's our error. And let's see the error of the periodic composition, that is, the error of the periodic composition is defined by subtracting the series periodic, which is our sinusoidal function, and the periodic estimate. That is the estimate of the periodic or of the seasonal component. Let's see what we get and let's plot our results. Okay, so this is the error of the trend decomposition and this is the error of the seasonal decomposition. So that will be all for today. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you find this video useful, please subscribe or support my channel. Thank you and have a nice day.